welcome back to a new video. So I recently got back from Mexico City. If you haven't seen my vlogs, please check them out. I'll put the link down in the description or you can just check out my channel. So those vlogs are great for seeing what we did every day, but I just wanted to make a video to recap the top things to do in Mexico City. So Mexico City is the fifth largest city in the entire world, and it's the largest city in North America. There's a lot of hustle and bustle. It's just a crazy city. It's super loud. There's a lot of sights to see and a lot going on, so it can be a little bit overwhelming to try and create a trip without knowing exactly what to do. I did not do very much research before I went on this trip, so I made a lot of mistakes mistakes by not seeing everything that I wish I could have seen. So most of the places on my list are places that I have been to that you saw in my vlogs, but some of these places are just places that I wish I had seen and I want to include them because I don't want you guys to make the same mistake that I did by missing out on these places. Before we head any further into the video, make sure you hit that red subscribe button down below, give this video a thumbs up, and comment for the algorithm. So the first thing I want to recommend is Plaza de las Tres Culturas, or Square of the Three Cultures. And it's called Square of the Three Cultures because it has the remains of the Aztec buildings, it's got the modern buildings all around it, and it has a European church. So there's the three cultures there. It's just a very th cool thing to see because you have the remnants of the Aztec civilization, which are thousands and thousands of years old, within the constructs of Mexico City. The next place that I want to recommend is called Zocalo. It's the main square. It's a huge plaza. It's the main plaza in the entire city. And the cool thing about this site is it's actually the site of the original Aztec city, Tenochtitlan. Lots of city events are still held here. Also the Palacio Nacional, the presidential palace is located there. Just so you know, you do need a piece of ID to access the inside of the museum. We didn't actually go see the inside of the museum, but I kind of wish we had since we were already there. Something that you have in the same area as well is the Metropolitan Cathedral. Uh, it's free to enter. There's a lot of people that come to visit it as like a pilgrimage. It's a very beautiful church. Next is the Bosque de Chapultepec, and this is a large park. A great way to explore this area is just by walking, which is what we did. You could also rent a bike. Uh, they have the, through, throughout Mexico City, they have this network of bicycle rentals that you can get, which are called EcoBC, um, and there's an app for it as well. So if you're interested in that, make sure you download the app and you can check it out. It's also a great way to explore just Mexico City in general. And the cool thing about Bosque de Chapultepec is it's the largest park in North America. It's actually even bigger than New York City, which I didn't realize. And there's a few things to do in Bosque de Chapultepec other than just walking around and enjoying the sights of the park. So the first thing is there's a zoo within the park and this zoo is free to enter. It's definitely not the most amazing zoo I've ever seen. If you, I'm from Calgary and if you've been to our zoo, our zoo is pretty good. We have a lot of different animals. So the one in Mexico City was a bit underwhelming. I think the only thing we really saw that was interesting was a panda. And I think they have pandas in most museums now. So I definitely wouldn't go there just for the zoo. But if you're already there and you just want another place to walk around in, then it's a good idea. Finally, if you're in this park, I recommend seeing the Chapultepec Castle. This is another thing that I really wish we had seen. Again, I didn't really do my research and I kind of missed out on this, but it's actually the only palace in North America where actual royalty has lived which is pretty cool. And from the pictures I've seen, it just looks like a great Instagram spot and a great spot for some photos as well. The one thing to know about Bosque de Chapultepec is don't come on Mondays because the park is actually closed. Moving on, the next place I would recommend seeing is the Museo Nacional de Antropología, and this is the National Museum of Anthropology. This is a museum I highly recommend visiting. It's one of my favorite museums that I've ever been to. It's very interesting. It's very well laid out. They give you a map, and there's a specific route that you take to follow the museum in order chronologically. So it tells the story of human evolution as well as the development 
of mix of different Mexican cultures and, and the modern indigenous groups in their culture that's still around today. There's also a really big fountain that's great for photos. While we were there, there were a lot of people that were ducking into the fountain. Um, you're not actually allowed to do that. Their guards would definitely blow their whistle. But hey, if you want like a quick fun photo, they're probably not going to do anything. So that might be fun too. This museum definitely caters to tourists. The staff there all speak English. There's lots of exhibit descriptions that are in English as well. And one thing that I didn't know about this museum is that there is actually a point at the entrance that's the starting point for a guided tour in English. So this tour takes place four times per day, except for Sundays. It goes on from 10.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. So if you want a guide and you don't want to wander around by yourself, this is definitely a great option. Next we have the Pyramids of Teotihuacan and this is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's another one of my favorite things that I saw while I was in Mexico City. There's a few different ways to go see them. One, you can take a bus and you can go up by yourself. I thought that was a little bit too complicated and what I wanted to do was just go with a group. So that's what we did. I'll put the tour that we used down in the description below. So if you're interested in that, you can take a look. They were pretty good. I recommend them. I would definitely go with them again. Again, the guides were interesting and definitely knew a lot about the site. If you want to spend a little bit more money, I think our tour was around uh, $50 US, but if you want to spend a little bit more money, and by a little bit I mean a lot, but <laughs> If you want to spend like $200, then you can get a really cool experience by going into the hot air balloon tours. So those are hot air balloons that go above the site and you can see the whole area as well as kind of the surrounding suburbs. It actually looks really beautiful. We didn't do this, but I think if I was ever to go back, I would definitely try this out. And one thing I would say about the tour groups, and I think this is pretty common, is I wouldn't go to the restaurant where they take you for lunch. It's quite overpriced, it's just a buffet, it's nothing special, um, the food isn't that great, or from what I saw it didn't look that great. So what we did actually was we just kind of went out on our own, we just wandered the street a few places down. There was a great restaurant, it was called Ohana. The owner was super lovely, the food was really great, and it was quite cheap. And fun fact, you can get these giant drinks. I got a mojito, like a liter of mojito for only $10. One thing to be aware of is you can't climb all of the pyramids anymore since the start of the pandemic. There's only one pyramid now that you can climb, which is the Pyramid of the Serpent. So you can't climb the really big ones anymore, which is a, a little bit too bad. My next up on my list is Basilica de Santa Maria de Guadalupe and this was a site that we went to with the tour. Um, it's in the historical part of the city and basically what this is is it's a complex of historical and contemporary buildings commemorating the Santa Maria de Guadalupe. Um, there's a beautiful old church and there's a beautiful new church as well so that's pretty cool. There's a little plaza there as well. Next up is probably the thing that I wish I had seen the most and didn't because I didn't do my research and that is the Grutas de Tolantogo in Hidalgo, Mexico. So Hidalgo and the Grutas is an area where there's these um, caves and there are these large pools of water and it looks absolutely gorgeous. It's a very Instagram famous spot and the best way to do this is probably with a tour. Um, you can go up there by yourself if you have transportation, but I highly recommend going with a tour. Uh, this is something I really wish I had done and I had looked into. Next, I have a bunch of different options for art. So if you're into art, I recommend going to the Museum of Modern Art, the Frida Kahlo Museum, and the Museo Nacional de Arte. For the Frida Kahlo Museum, um, it gets quite busy, so make sure you book some tickets beforehand. You can do that online. Next, I have the Palacio de Bellas Artes. So the Palacio de Bellas Artes is a beautiful spot. It's a white marble palace, 
and it's the home of a lot of concerts and shows. It's clo It was closed while we were there for renovation, but it hosts the folk folkloric ballet, which may be a cool thing to see. It's a collection of the most famous dances from all around Mexico. It features a lot of traditional dances as well. One thing I wish I knew is if you want to get a really good photo of this, then make sure you go to this cafe. It's inside a building and once you get um, to this cafe, there's a little balcony and that's a great spot to take a photo. Casa de los Azulejos, or the House of the Tiles. This is in the historic district, so it's close by to Palacio de Bellas Artes. It's a Baroque palace that's now home to a restaurant and it's a really great spot for photos. The Torre Latinoamerica skyscraper is a few blocks away from the Palacio de Bellas Artes. We just saw this one, we didn't go up, but if you want to get a really nice view of the city, this is a great place to go. You do have to buy tickets, but it gives you a really nice view of the whole skyline. Another place on my list that I really wish I had seen was Xochimilco, and this means the place where the flowers grow. So most of the water in Mexico City was slowly drained away by the Spanish, but Xochimilco remained untouched. Now it's a network of waterways where there's colorful gondolas that you can get a ride on. It's a really great Instagram spot, and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Angel de la Independencia. So this is a monument to the Mexican independence. We just saw this place during the day. It's a great spot for photos. Lots of people come from all over Mexico to take a photo here. And one thing I wish that we had known is it's actually lit up at night. So it's a great spot for photography at night. So the Palacio Postal is just a really great spot for Instagram photos that I kind of wish I knew about just because we love to get those great Instagram photos. So the Mercado de Artesanías Ciudadela is a great spot for just finding handmade goods. It's, it's a local handicraft fair that's just a great spot for souvenirs. So if you're into that, I would highly recommend going there. Even if you're not, it's a great spot to just check it out and see all the different vendors and things that they're selling. And you can see a lot of the Mexican culture there as well. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you are going to Mexico City or you have been, comment down below what you want to see or your favorite thing that you have seen. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you haven't already, hit that red subscribe button down below. I'm gonna be posting some more content on Mexico City and some more travel content in general, as well as some general lifestyle things. Thank you. Bye.